Well, welcome to this edition of the Black Madonna Speaks on the Heart of the Black Madonna channel with me, your host, Stephanie Georgia. Please consider subscribing to the channel as well as liking this video. And for those of you who are so moved, consider making either a one-time donation to support the channel or to become a Patreon supporter. There's several levels of support ranging from $1 per month and above. If you would like to obtain your very own copy of the book that I've written, The Black Madonna Mysterious Soul Companion, please see the links in the description below to the book launch page, which will give you all the information you would possibly need to order the book in any different way you could imagine, electronic, paperback, or audible. For this segment, we are going to be looking at the Canaanite goddess Asherah and the possible connections between this somewhat mysterious deity and the Black Madonna. I find the topic absolutely fascinating, and what I find the most fascinating is the bulk of the research and reference to Asherah comes from Hebrew and Mormon sources. There is quite a bit of revealing research and archaeology on this very enigmatic goddess. So we're going to begin with a short introduction. Who is Asherah? Throughout the Near Eastern pantheon, the great composite deity Asherah transitioned with various names, symbols, and attributes throughout the millennia while maintaining similar qualities of her essential essence and story. Asherah's various names, symbols, and attributes are especially evident in the years between 2000 BC and 7000 BC. She has many, many different names, such as Ashata and other similar names. What we also find is that she's not as commonplace 400 years later in the Hebrew canonical and non-canonical resources. And it's thought that she was basically driven underground. Hebrew artifacts are less prevalent as sanctuaries dedicated to her were frequently purged and burned. And it's likely that the religion was rooted out in the emergent religion of the uh, semi-nomadic tribes in Canaan, which later became Israel and Judah. It's also interesting that this goddess was quite prolific and common in the area of Syria and Palestine, and also penetrated throughout what's called the Fertile Crescent between Mesopotamia and Egypt. According to scholars, the Middle Bronze Age, which is between 2000 and 1450 BC, it ushered in the urbanization of Cana that included a religious pantheon headed by the father god El and his consort, the goddess Asherah. In the years 11,000 to 800 BC, this region of the Mesopotamia, Egypt, Syria, Palestine, it transitioned in terms of how religious expression was practiced due to numerous invasions, including defeats by the Egyptians from the south and the Hittites from the north. Asherah was the prototypical mother of 70 different Canaanite gods, which were known as Kuntlim. In English, that means procreatus of the gods, or Um, mother of the gods. The chief goddess of the Canaanite pantheon was also known as Lady Asherah of the Sea, also known as wife, concert, mother goddess of the chief god, as I said before, El, who later transformed into the god Baal. And we hear a lot about Baal as well as Asherah throughout the Old Testament. The Canaanite association of Asherah with the sacred tree is also found in the Israelite tradition. For example, one of the Canaanite epithets of Asherah found on some stone tablets, the word Elat, Goda, is etymologically identical to the Hebrew word for tree or Elah. Another word 
for terbinth, Allah, a word for oak, and also closely related to many other Hebrew words that are similar to this. We find a very interesting verse in Genesis 3, verse 20, where there's an association of Asherah with a sacred tree, and the statement is, she is the mother of all living beings. We also notice an association with the tree of life, of knowledge, and the Asherah imagery. There's a deep association with Asherah and trees. And there are numerous mentions of her in the Old Testament, mostly negative, but there are some that are positive. It's very fascinating to me, and was something that I just recently learned, was there are quite a few mentions of Asherah in the Book of Mormon. And recent archaeological discoveries are being quoted by numerous Mormon scholars as proof of the authenticity of the Book of Mormon and the revelations given to Joseph Smith. As stated before, Asherah was the chief goddess of the Canaanites, she was El's wife and mother and wet nurse of other gods. At least some of the Israelites worshipped her over a period of the conquest of Canaan in the second millennium before Christ through to the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC. According to the Book of Mormon and Mormon tradition, the uh, revelations to numerous prophets of Israel such as Lehi, as well as Nephi, there were visions that revealed the future fall of Jerusalem, as well as things that were to come into the future. In one of these images and visions was the revelation of a beautiful tree that was associated with a woman and a young child. Asha was associated with trees, sacred trees. The rabbinic authors of the Jewish Mishra, which is, was written in the second and third century ADs, explain the Asherah as a tree that was worshiped. One of the main prophets and authors of the Book of Mormon was Nephthi. He is considered the author of the first two books in this canon. In 1 Nephthi 11, Nephi considers the meaning of the tree of life as he sees in a vision. He asks, what is the meaning of this vision? And the answer he receives in a vision of a virgin, the mother of the Son of God, after the manner of the flesh. The answer to his question about the meaning of the tree lies within the virgin mother and her child. The virgin is the tree and is in some sense, and Nethi accepted this as the answer to his question as to the meaning of the tree. As an Israelite living at the end of the 7th century and during the early 6th century before Christ. There are many associations and similarities with the Jewish tree of life and Asherah and the associations presented in the Book of Mormon. What I also find interesting is there are numerous Black Madonnas throughout Europe that have association with trees. This one found in Poland, the narrative goes that the image that you see before you was placed in a branch of an oak tree, oh, excuse me, a linden tree, and she was forgotten and the tree grew around her. And then at some later date, there was a vision of a local person that said there was a, a black Madonna in this tree. And when they looked inside the tree, they chopped it down, they found this image. So I find that very interesting, the connections between Asherah, the tree of life, the image that was seen in the Morm Book of Mormon, and also this current Black Madonna. Archaeological discoveries from the late 1970s into the early 1980s have further indicated that in the opinion of some ancient Israelites, 
Yahweh and Asherah were appropriately worshipped as a pair. From the site, the archaeological site of Kurilit Arud in the eastern Sinai, come three 9th or 8th century BC inscriptions that mention Yahweh and his Asherah, meaning Yahweh, the Lord, and his consort, the goddess Asherah. And in other traditions and other sites, they've seen a pole that represents the goddess Asherah. An 8th century inscription from Kirit el Qom, which is about 20 miles southwest of Jerusalem, it also contains similar language, mainly Yahweh and his Asherah. And this indicates that at least during certain points in the 9th, 8th, and 11th century BC, Asherah, sacred pole, was perceived as an appropriate icon to erect in Jerusalem, even with a temple to Yahweh. For some archaeological studies, there are indications that the Asherah statue and cult may have been associated with a well under Solomon's temple. In this dig, we see numerous pillars that archaeologists tell us were the basis to put different images of both Yahweh and Asherah, which challenges most of our teachings that the ancient Hebrews were a monotheistic religion and also did not accept images or idols. And we see that this may have been true within Jerusalem at a certain point of time, but in rural areas and for large periods of history, images as well as more than one gods were completely accepted and displayed. The presence of Asherah's cult in Israel also raises questions about the monotheistic tradition that is often assumed to be a core principle in the Israelites' faith. Generally speaking, biblical scholars assume that full, radical, or philosophical monotheism came to Israel fairly late in its history and probably during the time of exile in the 6th century BC. Prior to this, as we see in this slide, we have abundant evidence that other gods and goddesses were worshipped in Israel, in addition to, and sometimes maybe instead of, Yahweh. Yet even in earlier material, we see evidence of a phenomenon that comes to dominate in the exile period. For me, all of this is a fascinating discovery, if you will, and may point to associations with the Divine Mother and ancient Hebrew traditions. It is also in of interest that the Knights Templar completed nine years of excavation under the Temple of Solomon during their first decade in Jerusalem and may have actually uncovered such statues. It is my theory that the Templars were in search of the Divine Sophia, or Divine Wisdom, and the Divine Mother. Because the founder of their order and rule, Bernard of Clairvaux, was dedicated to the Black Madonna. What is also of interest to me personally is that the Templars took dual vows, that of a knight, also considered a masculine vow, as well as a vow of monks or the feminine. Could it be that the discovery of Asherah as a consort of Jehovah or the God of the Jews shows a healthy marriage of both divinities, both feminine and masculine, and that this is the goal of civilization? Again, these are my theories but I find them quite intriguing. Please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. We have special members-only content on a monthly basis. 
and the levels of content that Patreon benefactors receive range from $1 a month to as much as you would like to give. If you would like a copy of The Black Madonna, Mysterious Soul Companion, you can click on the book launch link in the description below. My book is available on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, through Barnes and Noble, and the Book Depository. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this presentation brings a deeper appreciation of the many, many influences on the beautiful phenomenon of the Black Madonna throughout history. Blessings on your journey.